The Wonderful Wizard of Oz from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, http colon forward slash forward slash en dot wikipedia dot org. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz is a children's book from the year 1900, written by L. Frank Baum and illustrated by W. W. Denslow. It was originally published by George M. Hill Company in Chicago and has since been reprinted countless times, sometimes under the name The Wizard of Oz. The story chronicles the adventures of a girl named Dorothy in the Land of Oz. It is one of the best known stories in American popular culture and has been widely translated. Its initial success led to Baum's writing and having published 13 more Oz books. The book has been in the public domain since 1956. Historians, economists, and literary scholars have examined in depth the sources and meaning of the book. See The Wonderful Wizard of Oz dash Sources and Meaning. Section 1 Summary Dorothy Gale is a young girl who lives on a Kansas farm with her uncle Henry and Aunt Em and her little dog Toto. One day, a tornado appears outside and Dorothy is unable to reach the storm cellar in time, so she takes shelter with Toto in the farmhouse. The farmhouse is caught up in the tornado and deposited in a grassy field in the country of the Munchkins, killing the Wicked Witch of the East, who has established a reign of terror over the Munchkins. The Good Witch of the North comes with the Munchkins to greet Dorothy and gives her the silver shoes the Wicked Witch of the East had been wearing when she was killed. Her death is explained in The Tin Woodman of Oz as due to her being old and dried up before Oz became a fairyland. In order to return to Kansas, the Good Witch of the North recommends let Dorothy go to the City of Emeralds and ask the Wizard of Oz to help her. The Good Witch of the North also kisses Dorothy on the forehead, stating that no one will harm a person who has been kissed by her. On her way down the yellow brick road, Dorothy meets some remarkable characters. She liberates the scarecrow from the pole he's hanging on, restores the mobility of the tin woodman, and encourages the cowardly lion to journey with her and Toto to the Emerald City. The Scarecrow wants to get a brain, the Tin Woodman a heart, and the Cowardly Lion courage, and they are convinced by Dorothy that the wizard can help them too. When they arrive at the Emerald City, the companions must wear special spectacles to keep the brilliance of the Emerald City from blinding them. Wearing them, everything appears in different shades of green. They are told that the wizard will only see one of them a day, and that the guard himself has never seen him. When each traveler meets the wizard, he appears each time as someone or something different. To Dorothy, the wizard is a giant head. The scarecrow sees a beautiful woman. The tin woodman sees a ravenous beast. The cowardly lion sees a ball of fire. The wizard agrees to help each of them, but his help is conditional. One of them must kill the Wicked Witch of the West, who rules over the Winky Country. Once Dorothy, Toto, the Scarecrow, the Tin Woodman, and the Cowardly Lion arrive in the Winky Country, the Wicked Witch sends wolves, crows, bees, and then her Winky soldiers to attach them. But each threat is dispatched by the travelers. Then, using the power of the golden cap, the witch summons the winged monkeys to destroy the scarecrow and the tin woodman, but to bring her Dorothy and the cowardly lion alive. The winged monkeys can't attack Dorothy anyway due to the witch of the North's kiss, so they succeed in their mission. The final one the wicked witch can command due to the cap's enchantment. Dorothy is forced to work as a maid to the Wicked Witch, while the lion is pressed into service to pull her chariot. But the lion refuses to do so, 
because Dorothy sneaks him food every night. Dorothy is also left unharmed because she wears the silver shoes that have undefined magic powers. When the Wicked Witch gains one of the shoes by trickery, Dorothy in anger grabs a bucket of water and throws it on the Wicked Witch, who begins to melt. The Winkies rejoice at being freed of her tyranny, and they help to reassemble the Scarecrow and the Tin Woodman. So enamored are the Winkies of the Tin Woodman that they ask him to become their ruler, which he agrees to do after helping Dorothy return to Kansas. The long walk from the Wicked Witch's former palace to the Emerald City is alleviated by Dorothy's use of the Golden Cap which summons the winged monkeys to carry her and her companions to the Emerald City. The King of, Mon of the Monkeys relates how he and his mischievous people were forced to choose between submission or annihilation through the cap. They obeyed first Quilala, then the Wicked Witch, and now Dorothy herself. When Dorothy and her friends meet the Wizard of Oz again, he tries to put them off. Only under the threat of seeing the winged monkeys again, who under the wicked witch's command attacked him in the past, is the wizard convinced to allow the travelers into his throne room. Toto discovers a curtained side room away from the wizard's throne. Pulling the curtain back, Toto reveals a wizened old man who had journeyed here himself long ago from Omaha. He once rose high in a balloon and then landed in Oz, when the people saw the letters, quote, O-Z, unquote, on the balloon in Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, we find that they are his initials. They presumed he was their ruler and began building the Emerald City. Finding himself in a country of witches, the soon-to-be-designated wizard saw the need to maintain anonymity, hence his appearances to Dorothy and the others, which are revealed as clever for the dawn of the 20th century, special effects. The wizard tries to persuade the scarecrow, the tin woodman, and the cowardly lion that what they lack are not brains or a heart or courage, but faith in themselves. But he still agrees to meet each one of them and to give them, without their knowledge, a placebo which brings out the qualities they had all along. In order to help Dorothy and Toto get home, the wizard realizes that he will have to take them home with him in the same hot air balloon in which he arrived. Revealing himself to the people of the Emerald City one last time, the wizard appoints the Scarecrow, by virtue of his brains, to rule in his stead. Just as they are rising into the air, however, Toto leaps from the basket after a cat and Dorothy goes after him, leaving the wizard to rise and float away. Dorothy turns to the winged monkeys to carry her and Toto home, but they cannot cross the desert surrounding Oz. The citizens of the Emerald City advise that Glinda, the good witch of the South, may be able to send Dorothy and Toto home. They, the Scarecrow, the Tin Woodman, and the Cowardly Lion, journey to Glinda's palace in the Quadling Country. Together they escape the fighting trees, dodge the hammerheads, and tread carefully through the China country. The cowardly lion kills a giant spider which is terrorizing the animals in a forest, and he agrees to return there to rule them after Dorothy returns to Kansas. At Glinda's palace, the travelers are greeted warmly, and it is revealed by Glinda that Dorothy had the power to go home all along. The silver shoes she wears can take her anywhere she wishes to go. She tearfully embraces her friends, all of whom will be returned, through Glinda's use of the golden cap, to their respective sovereignties. The Scarecrow to the Emerald City, the Tin Woodman to the Winky Country, and the Cowardly Lion to the Forest. Then she will give the, the cap to the King of the Winged Monkeys, so they will never be under its spell again. Dorothy and Toto return to Kansas, and a joyful family reunion. Section 2. Sources of Waz Images and Ideas Main article, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, Dash, Sources and Meaning 
Some scholars have asserted that the images and characters used by Baum and Denslow closely resembled political images that were well known in the 1890s. They state that Baum and Denslow did not simply invent the lion, tin man, scarecrow, yellow brick road, silver slippers, cyclone, monkeys, emerald city, little people, uncle henry, passenger balloons, witches, and the wizard. These were all common themes in the editorial cartoons of the previous decade. Baum and Denslow, like most writers, used the materials at hand that they knew best. They built a story around them, added Dorothy, and added a series of lessons to the effect that everyone possesses the resources they need, such as brains, a heart, and courage, if only they had self-confidence. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz was a children's book, of course, but as Baum warmed in the preface, it was a modernized fairy tale as well. Section 3. Translations The Wizard of Oz has been translated into well over 40 different languages. In some cases, the story proved so popular in other countries that it was adapted to suit their local culture. For instance, in some countries where the Hindu religion is practiced, abridged versions of the book were published in which, for religious reasons, the tin woodman was replaced with a snake. The Wizard of Oz was very successfully introduced in the Soviet Union in 1939. Translator Alexander M. Volkov took liberties with his translation, editing as he saw fit, and adding a chapter in which Ellie his name for Dorothy, is kidnapped by a man-eating ogre and rescued by her friends. Volkov went on to write his own independent series of sequels to the book, including Earth and Juice and His Wooden Soldiers, Seven Underground Kings, The Fire God of the Moraines, The Yellow Fog, and The Mystery of the Forgotten Castle. Russian illustrator Leonid Vladimirsky drew the scarecrow short, round, and tubby. His influence is evident. His influence is evident in illustrations for translations across the Soviet bloc, where the scarecrow is almost always portrayed as short, round, and tubby. Leonid Vladmirsky has written at least two additional sequels to Alexander Volkov's Alternative Oz, or, quote, Magic Land, unquote, as it is called in Russian. Additional sequels to this Alternative Oz have been written by two more Russian authors and one German. Section 4. Stage and Screen Adaptations the earliest musical version of the book was produced by Baum and Denslow in Chicago in 1902 and moved to New York in 1903. It used the same characters and was aimed more at adult audiences. It had a long successful run on Broadway. Baum added numerous additional political references to the script. For example, his actors specifically mention President Theodore Roosevelt Senator Mark Hanna and John D. Rockefeller by name. Swans Before the Rainbow, pages 34, 47, and 56. See The Wonderful Wizard of Oz dash Sources and Meaning for more details. The most famous adaptation is the 1939 film The Wizard of Oz, featuring Judy Garland as Dorothy. This, in turn, has been adapted into two separate stage productions. But early film versions of the book include the 1917 film produced by Baum himself and a 1925 film, The Wizard of Oz, featuring Oliver Hardy as the Tin Woodsman. The Wiz was a hit musical with an all-black cast produced in the 1970s on Broadway. It was later made into a 1978 movie directed by Sidney Lumet and starring Diana Ross as Dorothy and Michael Jackson as the Scarecrow. The most recent adaptation of the novel is Disney's 2005 movie, The Muppets' Wizard of Oz. Another recent musical adaptation of an Oz-related book is the musical Wicked, based on the book Wicked, The Life and Times of the Wicked Witch of the West by Gregory Maguire. 
The novel was parodied in a Futurama episode, and Rax Zephon explicitly references the novel. The science fiction film Zardoz also references the book. Robert Heinlein used Oz to illustrate his world as myth metaphysics, beginning with, quote, the number of the beast. His characters discovered that all creators of fiction create actual universes, and they used Jacob Burroughs' dimensional travel device to visit Oz repeatedly in the book and in The Cat Who Walks Through Walls and To Sail Beyond the Sunset. The Oz story was cited as a major influence in the 1938 children's radio serial, The Cinnamon Bear. Section 5. Other Adaptations The most recent adaptation of the story is the comic book Dorothy, launched by Elusive Arts Entertainment in November 2005. Presented in semi Fumetti's style, using digitally altered photographs, this retelling of Baum's story has been updated to 2005, and quote-unquote stars model Katie Fisher as 16-year-old Dorothy Gale, a disaffected youth with dyed hair and piercings who steals her uncle's car and runs away from home, until she encounters a tornado and is knocked unconscious. She awakens in a strange land and utters, I don't think this is Kansas. Maybe it's Colorado. This version of the tale, written by Mark Masterson and directed and produced by Greg Marino, is in part a retelling of Baum's tale and is in part a retelling of the 1939 movie version of this story, as it incorporates elements of the Judy Garland film, such as the above homage to, quote, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore, unquote. Oz no Mohautsaki. Oz no Mohautsakai. A Japanese animation adaptation of four of Baum's Oz books was created in 1987. It consists of 52 episodes. This follows the story of Dorothy and her adventures with the Tin Woodman, Cowardly Lion, and Scarecrow in Oz. It continues on to the story of Ozma and Mombi and follows through the events of the other Oz books. Opening theme, Fancy Girl, by Satoko Yamano, and the ending theme is Maho no Crayon, Magic Crayon. Horrorcore rap group ICP's first Joker's card, Carnival of Carnage, features a song called Wizard of the Ghetto, taking an idiosyncratic view of the traditional children's fairy tale. Section 6, References Baum, Frank Joselin and McFall, Russell P., 1961, To Please a Child, Chicago, Riley and Lee Company Culver Stewart, Growing Up in Oz, American Literary History 4, 1992, 607-28 Culver Stewart, What Mannequins Want, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, and the Art of Decorating Dry Goods, Windows and Interiors Representations 21, 1988, 97 to 116. Dig, Ranit S., The Historian's Wizard of Oz, Reading L. Frank Baum's Classic as a Political and Monetary Allegory, 2002. Gardner, Martin and Rye, Russell B., 1994, The Wizard of Oz and Who He Was, East Lansing, Michigan State University Press. Gardner Todd, Responses to Littlefield, 2004, online. Green, David L. and Dick Martin, 1977, The Oz Scrapbook, Random House. Hearn, Michael Patrick, 2000, 1973, The Annotated Wizard of Oz, W. W. Norton & Company, ISBN 0-393-04992-2. Riley, Michael O., 1997, Oz and Beyond, The Fantasy World of L. Frank Baum, University of Kansas Press, ISBN 0-7006-0832-0. Dash X. Ritter Gresham, Silver Slippers and a Golden Cap, L. Frank Baum's The Wonderful Wizard of Oz and Historical Memory in American Politics, Journal of American Studies, August 1997, Volume 31, Number 2, pages 171-203. Hugh Rockoff, The Wizard of Oz as a Monetary Allegory, The Journal of Political Economy, 98, 1990. 
739 to 60 online at JSTOR. Sunshine Linda, All Things Oz, 2003. Swartz Mark Evan, Oz Before the Rainbow. Oz L. Frank Baum's The Wonderful Wizard of Oz on stage and screen to 1939-2000. Veld Frankos R. Following the Yellow Brick Road, How the United States Adopted the Gold Standard Economic Perspectives, Volume 26, Issue 2, 2002, also online here. Ziochus Tim. A Hundred Years of Oz, Baum's World of Oz as Gilded Age Public Relations in Public Relations Quarterly, Fall 1998. Section 7, External Links. Free ebook of The Wiz Wonderful Wizard of Oz at Project Gutenberg. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz at American Literature. Wonderful Wizard of Oz Questions and Answers. Pros and Cons of Oz as an Allegory. German Oz Fan Page. A copy of Hugh Rockoff, The Wizard of Oz as a Monetary Allegory, The Journal of Political Economy, 98, 1990, pages 739 to 60. David P. Parker, The Rise and Fall of the Wonderful Wizard of Oz as a Parable on Populism, 1994. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the, under the new free documentation license available at www.gnu.org forward slash copyleft forward slash fdl.html.